Hello lovelies! Today we are going to be making a super awesome video mock-up using Photoshop and After Effects of any website that you want on either a laptop or a phone. This is a super great way to showcase your websites on social media as well as on your portfolio in those cases when you're not sure if clients are going to keep your original design. It's super easy to do, but first up, let's take a look at what we're making. Alright, so we're going to open up Photoshop like I have here, and you're going to create a new document that is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. This is the standard format for HD videos, and it's just going to make it so much easier to use once we put it into After Effects. So once we have this document, we're going to open up uh, your Google browser, or wow, your Google search window, and we're going to search up for a MacBook or any other sort of device that you want to put your um, website on can't speak apparently. Now a trick with this is to go into tools and then uh, set the size for larger than uh, 2 megapixels and this is just going to make sure that we have a good quality image to go off of and so that we aren't using something that will turn out pixelated later because that really sucks. Uh, this one right here looks good so let's open that up in a new tab and we're just going to drag and drop it into our Photoshop document. Oh wow, that's big. Okay, so let's scale that down first of all so that we can see what we're doing. So that's right in the middle of the document. And that looks good right about there. So the next thing I want to do is add a background. Uh, so I'm going to add one that matches my branding, as you can see on my desktop back here. Cleaned it just for you guys. I'm just going to make that so that it fits the entire width of the screen. There we go. And next up, I'm just going to remove the white border around the MacBook, because we don't want to see that. That looks gross. So I'm just going to go into my first layer there with the MacBook, select all the little white background areas, and delete them. <coughs> cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle layer. Now I've got a really bright yellow set up here. It doesn't matter what color it is, as long as you can see it. And so I'm just going to go approximately over where the screen is. Because basically what we're going to be doing is we have our background. There we go, I can see it. And then the website is going to scroll up behind it. But we need a hole in the middle, like a window, so that you can see where things are going. So once we have a rectangle up there, I'm going to change the opacity to 80% so we can still see what's going on behind. And I'm going to press Command T really zoom in here so we can make sure that we aren't missing any little pixels on the side because that'll look really bad. Okay, that corner looks good. Now the, oh, too far, too far. Oh, no. oh my gosh, just going all over the place. And we'll line it up there. There you go, perfect. So once we have this, we're going to change the opacity back to 100% and we're going to rasterize the layer. Now, in case you didn't know, there are two image file formats. There's vector and raster. Vectors, like you probably learned in math, is the relative distance between two points. So you have, if you have a rectangle, no matter if you scale it up or down, the distance between those points is always going to be the same. This is really awesome for things like logos, where you might need to have it super big or super small, because it's always going to be the same distance between those points, just however many times larger or smaller. Raster images, on the other hand, is basically just a really, really big grid of pixels, each one having their own color. So for example, photos are raster files. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to rasterize our rectangle, so it's <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick. So that it's no longer a vector, but it's a raster instead. And we're going to use the magic wand tool, which I brought up using W. And we're going to select everything around it. So you can see the little selecting icon uh, came up there, and we can see what's selected. Uh, on the side in the layers panel, select uh, your MacBook layer as well as your background layer. And we're going to create a group of those. And then we're going to hide the background. And then we're going to click this little button down here, which is the layer mask button. So basically what this does is it says, um, for all the things that I have selected right now, I want to see that. And if anything's not selected, I don't want to see it. Which is really awesome in this case because it takes like one second. So boom, there we go. And you can't tell, but if I deselect this rectangle, 
uh, you'll now see that there is a little hole in the middle of our background. And that's pretty much it for the background part. So let's save that as mockup background to the desktop. Yes, we'll do that. And that's the first phase. So next we're going to go back into Google and we're going to go to whatever website we want to take a capture of. So let's use mine as an example here. Uh, so what we're going to be using for this is a program called Fireshot, which is not a plug at all. I just love it. It's totally free. And basically what it does is it takes a big long screenshot of your website and then you can save it as a PNG or a PSD. It's super easy to use. It takes like two clicks. So let's do that right now. We'll capture the entire page. So I'm just going to scroll down my website and it's going to select everything. Awesome. So let's save that as an image to the desktop first and then I'll tell you a couple things after. Now, as you can see in the uh, image capture here, there's a bit of a ghost header because a lot of uh, websites, they have a really big header at the top and then as you scroll down, an extra one comes in. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take two extra screenshots. The first one is to cover up that section where uh, we have sort of the ghost header show up. And the second one is the header itself so that we can import that in later. So let's go back to my website and that was right about, wow, my chest area, that's awesome. Uh, so we'll just take a screenshot of that entire section manually. So on a Mac, you do this with Command, Shift, and 4. I'm just going to drag over that whole section there. And then as well, this top part. There we go. So once we have these, I shouldn't have deleted that. Um, we're going to go into After Effects and we're going to create a new project. So I'm going to drag and drop all of my screen caps in here, just temporarily. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to edit that mock up that we had before. So let's right click and open that in Photoshop. Kind of forgot that step, but it's okay. <coughs> and then I'm going to drag and drop that other screenshot that I took of just the section with myself. I'm going to put that right over top there. Click enter. I'm going to save this as a PNG. Remove the copy part. Replace it. And that's just going to do its thing. Now we're going to go back into After Effects. So we don't need that screenshot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the background and we're going to drag it down to our timeline down here. And as you see, it takes up the entire space, which is awesome. <coughs> hmm. That's what we want to happen. Now we're going to take our uh, website mockup. We're going to drag that onto the timeline as well. Starting at zero seconds. And as you can see, it's way too big. So we're going to go transform underneath this. And this is basically where um, you do all the basics of animation. So animation is pretty much changing any variable over time. So this can be anything from the opacity of something, making it more or less visible, to the scale of something, making it bigger or smaller, or the position. And we're going to be using position. So first up, let's scale this down a little bit so we see the whole thing. Right there is both good. And then we're going to move this, not left and right, but up and down. <laughs> so that the top of the screen, which you can see right here, lines up with the top of the MacBook screen. And that looks good there. And then we're going to click the little, um, what is that thing, clock, uh, at our first time, and that's going to answer a keyframe. So basically what keyframes do is you're saying, okay, at this point in time, I want this variable to have this attributes. So let's go 10 seconds into the future. 10 seconds, there we go. We're gonna hit another keyframe. Now, if you change any of these variables with the numbers like I did for the, uh, for how I moved it, it'll automatically create its own keyframe. But we're just gonna go in and we're gonna do this manually, the old fashioned way. And we're gonna line it up so that the bottom of it, which is shown with those three dots, lines up with the bottom of our screen. That looks pretty good there. So then if we play this, you can see that it has a nice, slow, steady scroll all throughout uh, my website. Now, if you wanted to, you could totally stop here. But if you don't, you can also follow along with the other steps and continue making it awesome.
<laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go to time two seconds, zero, two, zero, zero, and we're going to add in a keyframe. Now, right now we haven't changed the speed or anything, so this moves at a slow and steady pace throughout our entire um, time, pretty much. But what we're going to do is we're going to add in a cool scroll effect, as if someone was on their trackpad and they were scrolling through your website. So we're going to add them in every two seconds apart, so we'll go to four seconds next. Add a keyframe. Six seconds. Add a keyframe. And eight seconds. And then add a keyframe. And then we're going to go in and edit the speed graph. So basically what we want to happen is that we want to start off, go really, really fast because the person has momentum with their fingers, and then it's going to taper off as they reposition their hand. Really fast, and then taper off over and over and over again. So if we go to the little graph icon here, we're going to pull up the, gosh, where is it? The speed graph. There we go. I found it. Um, and we're going to edit each of these points. Oh, not this one, though. So we're going to bring that back. We're going to edit that so it goes really, really fast, and then it slows down. Bring that back up there. So if you look at the first one, for example, it goes really fast, and then it scrolls down. Really, and then it just goes linear from there. So we're going to do that with all the other points. It's really fast, and then it'll scroll down. Just get that one out of the way. Really fast, and then it scrolls down. Really fast. Finally, really fast. So now if we see this, we'll do this cool little scrolling effect. <coughs> Which is pretty awesome. Now this is the second point where you can just leave it and continue on to the export stage. But, like I took the screenshot of the menu, let's put that in at the exact same moment when it would actually come in on our website. So let's exit out of graph mode. We can close this up. And let's go back to my website quickly here and look at the exact moment where it turns from the big header to the small one. Okay, so it starts off right at the bottom of recent work and we'll say, we'll say it comes in fully at the end of recent work and it goes about halfway. So if we go back to our project and we add that screenshot in, uh, we want it so in our layers, we want the uh, website to be at the very back, and then we're going to have that menu just come in between it, but we still want the main background and everything at the front, so we put it in the middle. Then next up, we're going to edit the scale again to make sure that it's the right size. Oh, it's really big. That looks pretty good. And we'll edit the position again. Oh, let's go for that one. So the first place that we want it is just right above the screen. So if we go back here, let's go to the exact point when it's halfway, just right about here, and we'll add in our first keyframe for position. And then it comes in fully when we hit the bottom. So let's look at that same position. And we'll create another keyframe, and then we'll just edit this so that it comes in. Well, not that far. <coughs> so now, if we watch it, scroll, and then the second one comes in all the way. And that's pretty much it, really. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to export. So first up, I'm not going to save that yet. Force of habit. Um, we're going to go to our project, which is this one right here, our composition. And we're going to edit the settings so that instead of 30 seconds long, it's only 10 seconds long, because we don't need it to be like ridiculously long. We're also going to name it as Website Mockup. Website Mockup. It's been a long day. And now if we play through the whole thing again, it looks pretty awesome. Okay, so let's watch this very quickly. Cool, that looks pretty awesome. So we're going to go up here and we're going to select our composition. And we're going to go File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. And then it's going to show up in a new program. So it might take a couple seconds to open. Just leave it. <coughs> so 
So we'll wait for it to show up here. Awesome. And then we're going to use a preset YouTube 1080p HD. And then if you click on that, uh, it can also take you to a whole bunch of different other formats. But this is just the one that I like best. And then for the output file, I'm going to put that back on my desktop as website mockup. And then we're going to hit play. Now this can be a really long or short process depending on how long the video is, how complicated it is, and how quick your computer is. But this one doesn't seem to be taking too long since it's just 10 seconds. So while we wait for this to finish, I hope you liked this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below or ask me a question on social media. And I promise I will answer um, and hopefully help you even more. Let's finish this. And then we'll open it up in quick time. We'll watch it. And then that'll be it for me. Four, three, two, one. Cool. So let's go back to our desktop and let's watch our website model. Okay, so you can see here, I didn't actually do this 100% properly, but I'm going to leave you with it. Um, you can see that the little menu there didn't go all the way to the side. Uh, so you just have to zoom in on a bigger screen, obviously, than just like a little MacBook. I do not recommend doing any sort of um, video editing work on just like a 13-inch screen. Usually I have my second screen with me, but I don't have that right now. Uh, and really zooming in and making sure that you're making that accurate. But the, all of the motions and everything are there, so you'll just have to go back and edit that yourself. So, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, and let me know if you have any questions.